As you watch this brand new footage of Armored Core 6, I'm curious, what do you see? Armored Core or Souls? Truth is, there's a bit of both here, honestly. I recognize the three-dimensional combat of Armored Core. I've seen its familiar mission structure, its atmosphere, and the unrivaled customization potential that the mecha genre lays claim to. But finally, no one can deny that there is a lot of Souls influence in this. This hard lock-on is not traditional Armored Core. The pacing and the telegraphed attacks would not look out of place in a Souls game. Even the stagger system is basically Sekiro's. Now, there's a lot I could say right now, but I'm honestly really tired of this whole debate, and I'd prefer to move on because there is now so, so much more to talk about instead. So Bandai Namco has given me about four minutes of gameplay to share here today, but I've actually seen a lot more than this. Press were actually able to see a live demo of basically this entire mission. And you know the best part of that live demo? It's that, unlike in this gameplay, the HUD, the heads-up display, was completely enabled. I paid a lot of attention to that, and while I don't have any footage of it, this is roughly what it looks like. Feel free to pause here, but I will break down this HUD more in depth later in the video so that you can understand it all. Now, I don't know why they haven't just shown it, I think it's actually the most genius part about the game that I saw, and I can't wait to explain why, but right now though, I guess I should just showcase the gameplay that I have been given. In this mission, it's our goal to infiltrate this huge facility. It's occupied by doses, who are addicts, basically. They're people that have been using that substance that's called coral as a drug. But the facility is also occupied by a group of arms dealers who have this RAD logo, and it's their machines that repel your intrusion as well. In the showcase, From Software emphasized the multiple paths that you can take within the mission. You can sort of see those upper and lower paths here off to the left, and they lead to a bridge in the distance, but this player's build at least has very efficient flight capabilities, so they use that to take a more direct approach. So obviously, vertical and horizontal flight is a big thing in this game. The energy consumption during vertical flight in particular reminded me a lot of the early generations of Armored Core. So you can fly upwards, but it's probably near impossible to achieve sustained vertical flight which I think is a good thing, as it stops you from flying over what is clearly more level design than Armored Core has traditionally had, which is amazing. One thing that does seem different, though, is it seems like you're way more energy efficient while flying and gliding horizontally in this game, which is something that seems to be partly enabled by the Assault Boost, which is basically a dodge boost that can be held for more distance and a continued overboost, so to speak. Let me just pause here for a second. Did you hear that little beep? So we're now in range of those enemies down there, and if you could see the HUD, then you would know that our lock-on has just automatically jumped onto the closest one. Our missiles are now primed, and we're now in what I'm calling a soft lock-on state. In this state, we still have really free, unrestrained, unguided movement of our mech, and it seems the lock-on can be freely moved between enemies. This should be more familiar to Armored Core fans because it's closer to the way that lock-on has traditionally worked in Armored Core, where you're responsible for keeping enemies within your sights in order to shoot at them, and the lock-on kind of does its own thing. So if we fire our missiles now, which they do, you can see one missile fly off to each nearby enemy, stunning them and giving us an opening to dash in and take them out one by one instead. Except at some point, the player locked on manually, and now we've transitioned into what I'm going to call a hard locked on state.
Now that the enemies are dead, hard lock finally falls off, but wait, there's more enemies up top, so the player goes up and commits to more hard locked combat against them. And again, in this hard locked state, we see a lock that entirely dictates the direction you're facing. And that is not how lock on has traditionally worked in Armored Core. In fact, the absence of hard lock on is, I think, actually a big part of what contributed to Armored Core's traditional identity. So instead, you'll recognize this lock on state from Souls. But before all the Armored Core fans get upset by this, perhaps rightfully so, Remember, the genius kind of is that the soft lock-on state, the traditional lock-on state, still seems to exist. And I think playing with that lock-on state will be viable, and it will give you benefits, although you're probably missing out by not hard locking on sometimes, and allowing the player and their camera to be very bound to a single enemy, and have your movement strafe around them perfectly instead. What's more, in this hard lock-on state, notice how all four missiles go to their single target here instead, as opposed to in the soft lock-on state where those missiles were spread evenly around the area to each enemy. That enables some really cool strategy, I think. And speaking of strategy, this player's combat strategy seems to be to use their machine gun to stagger these smaller enemies. Enemy stagger bars are seen here, and they build up visually just like they do in Sekiro. And you can see the moment that stagger kicks in here. In this staggered state, they've said that enemies take a ton more damage, and that makes it the perfect time to hit them with all your burst damage, which this player does with their barrage of four missiles. Or another thing you can do while the enemy is staggered is this. You can yeet enemies so far with this kick attack. Though, I feel like this enemy only flew so far because it was already staggered, though. In any other situation, the kick attack probably just builds up their stagger meter instead. Next clip. The gate was a major waypoint in the showcase, and it seemed to function a lot like a fog gate would in Souls, except when I watched, the player actually took about 10 seconds to hack open this gate. They were vulnerable the entire time they were doing that, and they even got ambushed during that process, so it's a cool way to sort of stop you from progressing too far. In Souls you can just like run past everything, so it's kind of good that they stop you doing that here. Um, but here they enter a tight corridor, and these in Armored Core traditionally force you to fight quite differently than you would have out in the open. Uh, Often in past Armored Core games, your missiles would become useless inside, especially if they're the type that fire upwards or outwards, and your long-range weaponry might not be as good either. So that's why it's a good idea to have some close-range parts to help you out in tight spaces, like shields now, or maybe melee blades as well. Speaking of shields, they've actually added something that I've always wanted them to add in Souls, and that's a timed block system. So what we know from interviews is that shields now have this brief moment when you deploy them where their defense is way stronger. It happens here. See that pulse when they pull it out? That should be a moment of optimal block. And that's obviously an incentive to perfectly time your blocks against strong attacks rather than just keeping your shield active all the time. Next, melee weapons. You can clearly do multiple strikes with a lot of these, and having these preset animations makes me think that the blades might be exclusive to the left side, like they are in many previous Armored Core games, rather than being able to dual wield them, although I could definitely be wrong on that. Next we see the scan function for the first time. Enemies are revealed and can be locked onto through walls. I love this. Being able to peek ahead and think about your strategy is so much better than always being forced to figure things out on the fly. It enables planning based on your build, followed by execution of that plan with your reflexes and your coordination, and that is peak armored core to me. Speaking of customization though, next let's talk about build assembly in the garage, which is another huge design pillar of Armored Core. So here we thankfully get an overview of all of the part categories in Armored Core 6. Here are your four weapon slots, your four frame slots, and then your booster, your FCS lock-on part, your generator, and an expansion slot. 
This is fewer categories than most Armored Core fans will be used to. Uh, inside parts, hangar weapons, radiators, those are all missing here. That said, the parts that we do see previewed here do have some great depth to them, so I think that might make up for having fewer categories. For example, your generator, which governs your energy, now has cooling built into it, rather than radiators being a separate part. And then certain weapons, like this laser dagger, can perform a charge attack if held, which is a depth to the gameplay. We also see certain ranged weapons that have this charging property as well. And then there's missiles, which have unique attack characteristics, you know, as they always have, but their descriptions here are more detailed than ever. Some are capable of multi-lock, which is when missiles fire at multiple targets, which I showed off earlier. Some missiles are better for AoE, creating a damage area. Some are better for staggering enemies like these, which contribute greatly to buildup of ACS strain. And some missiles will just be great for taking out airborne enemies, like these, which are deliberately slowed down. Missiles hound targets during lengthy airborne time, enabling heavy pressure tactics. All these build considerations are such a fun, amazing part of Armored Core that I can't wait for people to discover. And if you're a new player, I think a lot of the time you will be able to get by simply reading these written descriptions. But the real endgame in Armored Core is learning to understand the complex stats and specs of each part seen down here. Though, if you think these stats are overwhelming, <laughs> I've got news for you. So this is probably the simplified version. It reminds me a lot of Armored Core 4, where you were shown the most important stats on parts, but then you could toggle the display to reveal this. Yeah, so stats can get pretty intense, and while having a simplified view and glanceable icons is obviously the more modern approach, I really hope that they don't shy away from these overwhelming stat screens because they are such a hallmark of the series. In the showcase, the player actually accessed this garage mid-mission after being destroyed by this quad-legged enemy. Their mid-range biped build was having a lot of trouble dealing any kind of damage to this enemy at range, so they wanted to change their build to an agile close-range one instead. And they did it all manually and it took less than a minute and it was so convenient. Instead of having to do the entire mission again, they simply died, they loaded up the garage from the menu, they tweaked their build, and then they returned to the checkpoint that they had unlocked in their mission. And they were back with a different build completely. But as to the fight itself, there's actually so much to break down in this fight, but the main thing I really want to talk about happens here, where they finally stagger the enemy. Whereas in Sekiro, this would enable an execution on stagger, in Armored Core 6, it's up to you to fully deliver that execution. The enemy is now taking extra damage, so if you have burst attacks, now's the time. What's more, it seems you can prolong this staggered state with certain attacks, keeping them stun-locked with the right combo, potentially, which might give a really high skill ceiling to this whole process. If you listen carefully here, you can hear a narrator say, All right, tourist, that's enough. That's because the enemy leader of this facility has been shit-talking you this entire time. The dialogue that I heard was witty and well-delivered, and that is a very welcome change from past Armored Core games. There was also some banter between this narrator and your own female operator, who is there to support you through your missions and warn you about what's ahead and a main boss is ahead. But before this, in the demo, the player actually called a resupply drone, replenishing their health, their repair kits, and their ammo, and then it was time to fight this thing. A boss that has its own health and stagger meter that appears at the top of the screen. Its attacks are extremely well animated and telegraphed, and it has a ton of area denial and AoE, and it's just so well animated, and it looks like such a great fight. It also has two lock-on points, a weak spot at the front, and a shoot at the top, which I guess flying builds might be able to take more advantage of. I wonder how a slow tank build would deal with something like this, though. It seems like it would be hard to get distance and dodge with a tank, hey? Anyway, 
As promised, let me recreate the heads up display in more detail, starting with the most important things. First up is your AP, your armor points or your health basically, which was displayed numerically and with a slider around here. When the player took damage, this number and the slider would obviously deplete and the screen would also distort a little bit, especially at the edges, which you can kind of see here. Then there was the energy gauge seen around here. This was depleted by things like flight, quick boosting, and I think melee as well. Of course, in Armored Core, how big this bar is, is determined by the capacity of your generator part, and how fast it depletes and recovers is determined by the energy output of that generator and the cumulative energy drain of all of your parts. Of course, the efficiency of your boosters will probably also play a part. Above it was a stagger bar. It was empty by default, but would fill up with orange from the center, just like this, whenever you took damage, and then it would deplete if you didn't take damage for a few seconds. The same goes for enemies. If you get staggered though, I think you just sort of pause for a couple of seconds, and previous interviews seem to suggest that you'll start falling if you're in the air as well. Next, there was like a box here for the expansion slot. So extensions are a category of parts that have traditionally allowed you to do unique things like jam enemy radar or shoot down enemy missiles automatically. Sometimes these extensions were activated manually, sometimes they're passive, and they're like my favorite part category in Armored Core because they give a ton of character to your build. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure the demo had no expansion part equipped, so this box was empty. Next to it were two bars. One was a visual indicator for your repair kits, of which the player had three. Armored Core has never had an Estus Flask equivalent before, but it does now. These can be activated instantly to heal the player, and it seems they can be replenished at supply stations, which can be called in certain missions, apparently. Underneath repair was a bar that said scan. When activated to scan surroundings for enemies, this bar would take a little while to regenerate and then it could just be used again. It wasn't long though, like 10 seconds between each scan maybe. On the bottom right were four familiar weapon slots. They showed your total ammo and your remaining magazine ammo for your left arm, right arm, left back, and right back weapons respectively. This character has missiles on their right back, a machine gun on their right arm, a shield on its left back, and a blade on its left arm. Now, a recent interview stated that all four weapons are bound by default to all four controller triggers, and that all of your weapons can be fired at once, which is not how it's worked in any previous game. That sounds kind of insane, honestly, and pretend you're holding a controller. I cannot fathom for the life of me, how you're supposed to fire all four weapons with your pointer and middle finger, and then doesn't that just leave your thumbs free for assault boosting and boosting and moving and interacting and changing weapons? Just your thumbs for all those actions seems very difficult, uh, so I'm extremely keen to get a hold of a demo and see what the deal is here. There was a vertical speed gauge on the left, there was what looked like an altitude gauge on the right, there was even a compass at the bottom that was actually pretty cool because it had red dots for all of the enemies around you, which I assume would actually be pretty useful when helping to locate the enemies that are just outside your field of view. Then the mission objective was written top left, a waypoint marker was on screen for that objective, and killed enemy credit rewards would pop up on the bottom right. Of course, as mentioned earlier, the center of the screen features your fire control system, your lock-on, essentially. It's circular like it was in Armored Core 5, and while you're out of combat even, it stays in the center of your screen, and it has these sliders that help you keep track of your remaining magazine capacity as you fire your left and right arm and back weapons, which I'm a huge fan of. So. The UI is nice, it's super clean, and it displays a ton of information, but it's this lock-on behavior that I think is the most fascinating thing about Armored Core 6 so far, and this is the part of the UI that I kind of love the most. So, again, when you get in range of an enemy, this lock-on element jumps over to them, while the lock-on display itself starts to display that enemy's health and stagger meter at the top, 
in addition to your ammo in the bottom left and right. Inside the lock-on though, there's this little number which dictates how many of your missiles will go to this enemy should you fire them. Again, if you're soft locked on, that number will be split between nearby enemies, and if you're hard locked on, all of your missiles will go towards them. Additionally, the lock-on actually updates with an enemy's distance from you, which is extremely important information because staying at optimal weapon range is a really big thing in Armored Core. And it also shows little damage numbers, which pop up as you pop off. And that's really important to give you visual feedback on the effectiveness of your range or the effectiveness of your weapon type. You want to know if you're dealing damage. And I always loved this feature when it was added in Armored Core 4. So I'm very glad to see that return. I even noticed some little enemy status words pop up around the lockbox, like unaware would pop up if the enemy didn't know you were stealthed, and ACS load limit, I think, popped up if you staggered them. So this lock-on is doing a lot of heavy lifting in Armored Core 6, and I love it. I'm glad they've baked so much information into this UI because that is such a huge part of what Armored Core is all about, and what their design team deserves props for is the fact that they've baked all this information in while keeping everything looking sleek and unobtrusive. It's very clever design and I hope they show off the HUD soon because I'm probably just butchering it in Photoshop now. I have so much more to say about this demo, but it should probably wait for when we get new footage or for if I get my hands on it, if I'm lucky. In the meantime, if you're curious about Armored Core, then please check out my recent video where I show off every single old Armored Core game. And I think that video will just always stand as a way for you guys to learn a ton about the series if you don't have the time to play for yourself. And I had an amazing time playing all of the old games. But until next time, thank you for watching. I also want to say a special thanks to Con from Bandai Australia for getting up at midnight to pass me this footage. That was so appreciated and it's honestly half the reason I had enough time to edit all of this for you guys. So thank you, Con. And the same goes for Steven at Bandai and countless others who just enable these kind of demos and previews behind the scenes. Thank you. And if you're a content creator who couldn't get access, then you're more than welcome to react to this video and to this footage. I hope that helps somewhat. Uh, but thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.